Hi friends, welcome to Opa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 20 in Azure Databricks playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to delete a mount point or how to unmount a mount point. So in our previous videos, we have discussed about Databricks utilities. We have discussed about some file system utilities inside the Databricks utilities. We have discussed about mount function or mount command available in the Databricks to take any external storage and attach with your cluster so that you can access that storage as if you were accessing a local file system. So we discussed all of it, all those things in our previous videos. So please watch those videos before watching this video so that you will get most out of it. So in this video, let's say if I created a mount points already, then how to delete that mount points? So what is mount point? Mount point is nothing but like a, a point uh, which created on top on your cluster through which you attached some external storage actually. So once you created that mount point and once you attach your external storage with the cluster, then from that point of the time, you can access that storage very easily as if you are accessing some local file system. So all this we have discussed in our previous videos. So in this video, let's assume if I created a mount point, how to delete that mount point. I don't want that mount point or attachment point on my cluster anymore for the external storage. So if that is the case, how to delete it or how to unmount it. So, so we will call it like an unmount. So to do that inside the Databricks file system utilities, inside the file system utilities, there is something called unmount command. Using this command, you can do that. Let me practically show you that. So let me go to uh, Azure Databricks workspace, uh, which I have already created. So in this workspace, there is already one uh, notebook which we created in our previous video called testing mount. So if you have watched my previous videos, Using this mount function inside the file system utility, we created this mount point for this external storage like blob storage. So I have a blob storage. So inside this blob storage, I have a container. So inside the containers, I have a container called sample container. See, this sample container, we mounted it here. So you can see my storage name, then my container name. And then we given this name for the mount point. And we used account key to mount our uh, Azure blob storage. So please watch my previous video before watching this video. That's why I always stress that watch previous videos because ev every video is in a sequence order actually. So now let me try to execute this cell to create a mount point first. Let me hit shift enter to execute the cell. So this will create a mount point for my blob storage. Once the mount point created, I can access my storage. That means I am creating a mount point for this sample container, right? So inside this container, whatever the files and folders I have, I can access them very easily with by using the mount point path. I no need to use a full path uh, with the credentials for the, my storage to access the data. So let's wait for this cell executed here. See cell executed, that means mount point created. Now, if I execute this command the, under database file system utilities, under file system utilities, you have this LL, ls command to list down the content. So this is mount point name, right? So if I execute this path uh, into my ls function, then what it will do inside this, so this point, this, this mount point actually points to my storage account container, right? Sample container. So inside the container, whatever the files and folders I have, it is going to list down that. So let me execute this by hitting the shift enter. See, it is listing down. It is saying there is some employees that uh, CSV file and there is some data folder, input folder, output folder and everything. So if I go see data folder, input folder, output folder, employees.csv file and everything is there, right? So now uh, let's assume uh, since now my, my mount point is created already, uh, it is very easy to access any data. So for example, if I want to take the data from this CSV file, let me practically run that and show you. So under Spark, there is something called a read function or uh, read attribute to the read attribute. There is something called CSV function that will help you to read the CSV data. So for the CSV function, I need to supply the path to my file. So this implies that CSV file path is very difficult, right? It is inside the external storage, inside the sample folder, then implies that CSV file, right? So if I click this edit button, I can see the content of the file, uh, file also here, right? So now I don't want to use some full path with the credentials now, right? I can simply take this mount point path. So from here to here, it, it, it is going to uh, denote to my sample container. Then take this entire path here. Then I'm supplying this path as a file location path to the CSV function. And if you see for the CSV file, the first row in the CSV file is actually header. So let me mention that also. This CSV function has a parameter called header to the header function. If I supply value as true, that means I'm trying to say like first row in the file is header. Then but this entire code is going to generate a data frame. So let me save the data frame into a variable called df. So once the data frame is created, let me use this df.show function to see the content on in the uh, data frame. So see, I'm able to read the data also, right? 
so that means mount point created successful and from the mount point i am able to access data also very easily with a simple mount point path as if i am accessing a local file path so this is all we discussed in our previous video right so now let's assume by some reason i i am done with my job and i now i want to delete this mount point so this mount point whatever is available here i don't want this mount point anymore so for that what you need to do if, if let me go to the new cell you see here under db utilities dot fs dot help function help function will give you all the commands inside the file system utility right right so let me execute that by hitting the shift enter button now if you see the output of this cell execution you can see there is something called unmount function to that function you need to pass a mount point this is going to delete a mount point whatever you created so now what i will do very easy so i am going to use db utilities then file system then unmount function so to the unmount function i have to give the mount point name so this is my mount point name right if you see here this is the mount point name i created so now if i execute this code it is going to delete my mount point so let me hit shift enter button to execute it so once the cell execution completes the mount point will be deleted from that moment we cannot access the data through the mount point on the storage so i will practically also show you that let's wait for the command to execute here see command executed successfully now this mount point has been unmounted now if i try to execute this code which using a mount point and trying to read the data from the csv file it is going to give error so let me hit shift enter button and let's see what will happen see error happened it is saying path does not exist because what it will do on the databricks file system it will try to look for this path and that path is not available so it is going to give error if you have mounted this path on the databricks file system then it is going to identify that path and from the external storage it is going to be this mount point is points to external storage so from the external storage it is going to take that file and it is going to give the data so this is how you can delete the mount points using this unmount function in the databricks very easily i hope you got idea about how to delete or how to unmount mount points in the databricks thank you for watching this video please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much